We're glad to know you're still there and watching us. It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and it's time now to review uh, some of the headlines or to take a look at some of the headlines that made it to the front pages of our newspapers. Uh, we're going to start with Punch, then we'll move to Nation, and then The Guardian, and finally The Nature News, if time will permit us. And we're glad to uh, know that we are being joined this morning uh, by a legal practitioner who is a regular on the show, Tunde Kolawole. Good morning and welcome to the program, Tunde. Good morning, my brother. Okay, so Thanks for having me. it's always a pleasure. Um, we are beginning with Punch newspaper this morning, and uh, the, the headline there, the boldest there, is that Naira plunges to 1,025 Naira to a dollar. Job losses, factory shutdown, loom. The riders there are forex crisis hinders raw materials procurement, causes financial problems, that is according to NECA, and SMEs decry in Pending shutdown, reps probe airlines, schools demanding dollars. Okay, so uh, I'll just take all the headlines on the punch and then we begin uh, commenting on them one after the other. The other one is Senate condemns 2.3 trillion Naira oil theft, probe security agents. Inflation to slow Nigeria's growth to 2.9%, says IMF. And flood kills 45, displaces 171,544. Five persons in 13 states. That's according to NEMA. Then we have 18 parties jostle for 5.4 million votes in Kogi, Imo, and Bayelsa. Army General Jail, seven years order, order to refund 3.7 billion naira. And NECO in Dykes, 93 schools for cheating. Blacklist, 52 supervisors. So let's begin with the uh, Naira, Forex crisis. Naira plunges to uh, above 1,000 uh, Naira to a dollar. Mm. The, the, the scenario that is painted over there is really, really frightening. Uh, what is being said is that uh, most of the companies, most of the factories, most of the manufacturers who will require currency to be able to import raw materials and services will no longer be able to do so because of the dwindling fortunes of the Naira. In fact, it's also reported in that paper that some factories have begun to close down and that people are already losing their jobs. The implication of this is that um, a single window forex policy of the present government is really not uh, working. The implication is also that uh, it would appear that uh, the foreign exchange uh, uh, handle was better or more properly managed under a Mayfield. If there is no immediate turnaround in the fortune of the Naira, chances are that the present government will turn uh, Mr. Mayfield into an hero and um, removing from the black book of uh, villainy. The implication is also that uh, the economic policies of the present government was not well thought out before they embarked on those economic uh, policies. And uh, you want to say, where you are running your money in mono economy that solely depends on uh, petroleum uh, extraction, and sales in the international market and not manufacturing. It may not be advisable to begin to run a single forex window for the for the country. Where in the best interest of the government and the best interest of the average Nigerian person whose life depends on massive, massive importation of different goods and services, the present government had better find solutions to this crumbling uh, state of the Naira. In fact, it's reported in the paper in India too that Naira is about uh, the second worst performing currency out there about in the whole of Africa, which means that uh, the CFA franc and then the Ghanaian cities and all the Rwandan robots and what have you are doing better than the Naira. The spectre 
of uh, spiral inflation or uncontrollable inflation, the problems of uh, goods and services disappearing from the shares all over the country is staring us in the face. I hope we will not, in the shortest time, begin to line up in front of shops to purchase things like uh, sugar, baby milk, salt, and uh, what have you. That's my take on that. Mm. Out. Now, um, just following that as well, um, there is also this story uh, that uh, Senate has condemned 2.3 trillion Naira oil theft and probe securities, uh, security agents. Let's have your comments on that. It's uh, very simple. I was watching a documentary uh, which focused on uh, petroleum extraction, distribution and sales in Saudi Arabia. I will not believe it. What I saw in that documentary has candid me. Saudi Arabia that does not appear to have the kind of uh, technological savvy that Nigeria do have, has fully automated and, computer and computerized all its petroleum extraction, storage, distribution and sales internationally so that you can sit in one control room and monitor the quantity of oil that is being drilled or pumped from the soil the number of uh, liters in storage tanks what the ships and uh, oil tankers are taking the market in which those uh, tankers are going and then the funds that are being paid by international oil marketers and purchasers so now begin to ask yourself, if Nigeria has been producing petroleum products or crude oil since uh, 1959 or thereabouts, why have we as a nation not been able to do the kind of thing that Saudi Arabia has been able to do? Why is it that up to now, we don't know the quantity of uh, petroleum or crude oil that is being pumped out of the market? Why is it that we cannot uh, provide security for the oil pipeline. Why is it that we don't even have a data on who is buying our oil, how much is being bought, and where the oil is being sold? At the bottom of all this is what I would describe as corruption on the part of those who are managing the Nigerian economy, the Nigerian society. I would describe it as a, one of the tragedy of, of, of a nation because a situation where you cannot control the sole product that you have to sell to be able to earn hard currency is to say the least tragic. And different governments have devised uh, different means to really secure the oil sector. I remember General Bassanjo made himself the petroleum minister. I think uh, Jonathan uh, also did uh, the same. And presently, too, it would appear that. Uh, President uh, Bola Tinobu will be doing uh, the same thing. So if we have taken all this, uh, why is it that the challenges in the oil, in the oil sector has remained hydra-headed? The answers are quite simple. One of the answers is that uh, we have refused to take care of the communities where the oil is being drilled. We pollute their environment, we make their water unfishable. They cannot farm. Every day we are flying gas and burning it, thereby eating the environment. Imagine if we were able to take care of all the ecological challenges that they are facing in those areas. And we're also able to provide free schooling for their children, build houses for them and give to them free, ensure that their roads are monitorable and whatever ensure that their children are able to get work when they graduate from the different schools, especially within the oil uh, industries in which, uh, which is based in their communities and all that. If we were able to do that, you will find out that the communities over there will be the one protecting the oil pipelines because they know that their well-being depends on those... Uh, 
We seem to have lost the audio from uh, today, Kola Ole there. We do hope that he will, uh, we will rectify the problem and he gets to rejoin us and to talk to us. We're trying to review the headlines of the national dailies and we were on the punch. The story was, um, uh, <clears throat> the story was on uh, the Senate condemning 2.3 trillion Naira oil theft, theft and probes and the probing of the security agencies. Um, we've, we've heard this story over and over and over again. All the time we hear the story that the oil is being stolen. And then we keep wondering why uh, Nigeria as a country, a rich country at that, because we are supposed to be rich, rich enough, uh, cannot have a, a monitoring system that will, will monitor ev the progress of every drop of oil as is being done somewhere else. At least we have a model in uh, the UAE where they have uh, everything monitored in one room. Even if it has to be in the bedroom of the president, let it be. But there need to be a process where our oil can be monitored from where it is drilled uh, to where it is being produced and where it is being distributed to and everything. It's done somewhere else. And is it that is too costly? Is it costlier than what we are losing daily to theft? If we can answer that question, like they say, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. We, if you think also that uh, putting that kind of a monitoring system is, is expensive, uh, are we not losing more than uh, what we could have used to do uh, just that same thing that we are saying that it is not possible in Nigeria? Everything is possible. People are using AI to, to move uh, to greater heights. Uh, people are using technology to move to greater heights. And we're still here grappling with trying to count one or two things and giving a figure. So Nigeria is losing out. And the earlier things like this are done, the better. Things to monitor uh, the progress or otherwise of anything that is a national asset. Now we don't even know how, how much oil we produce. Uh, we cannot say that for sure. We don't even know how many people really are in this country because uh, the figures are estimated. We don't know how much gold is being mined in this country because there's no system put in place to make sure that this is done in a central way, just like they're doing the oil, and the money comes to the coffers of the federal government. We don't know how much cocoa goes out of this country. We don't know any, a lot of things. Let me not say we don't know anything. We don't know a lot of things because data is difficult to get. Uh, Tunde, are, are you able to rejoin us? Tunde, are you there? I'm back, I'm back. Sorry, Thank we lost you. your audio for a I'm moment back. there. Yeah. Uh, so remember, we're talking about um, uh, the condemnation of the Senate of the money that is being lost to oil theft. Maybe we should just exactly. move to uh, another thing because you really did make your point there. Uh, inflation, the IMF, the world body, uh, said that um, has reduced, uh, has said that the inflation will slow down Nigeria's growth to 2.9%. You know, there was a, a higher figure for our growth, but the inflation, uh, according to IMF, will slow down the economy to 2.9%. And we know that before this, this last uh, story that we were trying to talk about, we talked about Naira plunging to uh, 1,025 1, Naira to a dollar. And one of the writers on that story said that the, um, this, the House of Reps will prove House of Reps will probe uh, the causes, sorry. Uh, yeah, they will probe um, airlines and schools that are charging in dollars. So uh, maybe because that is one of the reasons why uh, the dollar is in such a high demand or something, I, I don't even know. But right now, IMF is saying our growth rate will be reduced. Our growth rate will be slow. And now it will be 2.9. I, I wonder what your comment will be on that. Well, my comment is uh, that even without the IMF telling us uh, what is being said is uh, more than obvious, uh, now the manufacturers have no money for import uh, raw materials and services that they will require to do production. And of course, too, uh, those who are producing a few things in here will find it difficult to pay the shipping organizations 
to take whatever they are producing out of, uh, of uh, the country. More importantly, too, very few countries in the world, the central banks of very few countries in the world, will now be, I mean, many of the central banks of the different countries in the world will be very wary of doing business with Nigeria now, given the parallel state of, uh, of, uh, of the Naira. So, like I have always said, if I were in this government, I will focus on agriculture so that uh, we can guarantee food security for the people. We can also look at the area of security and then maintain existing infrastructure while we begin to strategize on how to get the Naira back on its uh, feet. But the Naira cannot be back on its feet until Nigeria begin to grow, I mean, to grow the food it eats, manufacture what um, uh, it requires to sustain the people, and also, of course, ensure that the existing infrastructures uh, are maintained. It is not a rocket science. It is just that uh, we as a people now devote almost 90 to 70, 75 to 80 to, percent to of our time and resources to politics, politics that does not have value for either the economy or the society in general. Look at the billions or trillions of naira that we waste uh, conducting all these kangaroo elections. At the end of the day, we neither be here nor there. <clears throat> Look at the amount of money that is spent on litigation by the Nigerian people. Because at the end of the day, all the money that the politicians are spending on litigation is coming from the taxpayers' money, coming from the resources, coming from the wallets, coming from the government and what have you. These are money that we could have uh, deployed to more productive uh, purposes. So we need to review the expenditures on this democracy and also the quantum of money that is being used to sustain the politicians and the civil servants and governance. Without that, the ship of the nation's economy might be heading towards the rock. Let us all pray that it really doesn't hit the rock. Because if it does, we will all be in very, very serious crisis such as was witnessed in Ghana so many years ago, in which the Guinean economy collapsed, and all the people of Ghana started them migrating abroad in, in, in droves, in, in massively. They came to Nigeria. That was where the Appalachian Ghana must go. I came from. They came to Nigeria with their sacks or clothes on their head, and then began to do many other jobs. Shoemakers, cleaners, laboratory cleaners, houses, and what have you. And then you now imagine if Nigeria were to hit that the bottom, where will 200 million Nigerians go to? It's a frightening, frightening specter. There is no country in Africa that can accommodate the rich population that the Nigeria has. In fact, it will lead to massive, massive dislocation throughout the whole of West Africa if not the whole of Africa as a whole. Presently, our children are migrating to Europe in rafts. They travel on rickety vessels, and on a daily basis, they get dry in the Atlantic Ocean, all in the bid to get to Europe, to, go, to get to America, to get to Canada. But you'll be amazed that when the media interview some of these young people who are traveling by sea, and meeting death in thousands or hundreds on the high seas, they will tell you that is it not better to be eaten by fishes than to stay at home and die of hunger and kwasoko. So, what surprises me as a person is that our leader seems not to be seeing this thing. And if they, they are seeing it, it would appear they are non challenge because they don't care. Because most of them really are not Nigerian. They are expected governor, they are expected uh, senators, expected house of rep, expected ministers, and whatever. They all have dual citizenship. 
Their family members have dual citizenship. So as the Nigerian, as the Yoruba will say, he give that air for once the branches uh, rips off, the bed will take to flight. They are probably waiting for the economy to collapse and then they begin to relocate and leave us to be wallowing in abject poverty and to be at each other's uh, truth. We need to pray as a people that God should intervene. I know people have to work before God will come to their aid. But the heart of uh, the average Nigerian leader seems to be hardened. The more we pray, the more we shout in the mass media, on the social media, the more non challenge, the more adamant they seem to appear with regards to our plight as a people. Of the people, we now find out that uh, uh, flood has killed 45 people, displaced 171,545 persons in 13 states. You know, finally, it has reached that point. They, the government kept warning and warning, and every year it keeps warning and warning. Right now, we have lost lives. 45 people have died because of flood and more than 171 people have been displaced by flood. Your brief comment on that before we move to the nation yeah. newspaper. All right. Well, I will quickly say that uh, flooding is not peculiar to Nigeria alone. It's all over the world. I think it's uh, happening because of uh, climate change, which people like both scenario and then Donald Trump have been denying. All this flooding is a reality that uh, humanity will go to see them and tackle. For Nigeria, I think our problem is more of a negligence. Like we had said on this program before, we could build artificial dams to accommodate some of these flood waters when they come and use them during the dry season. We could also dredge all the major rivers that we have uh, in the country. Of course, we can also expand most of the dams that are supposed to warehouse all these uh, the flood waters and water. But lo and behold, like it's happening in the other areas or phases of our lives, we wait for disasters to happen before we begin to cry out. I mean, the weep crocodile tears that is either here nor there. And literally, the tragedy subsides or the noises die down, we will go back to square one and then begin to wait for the next disaster, the next flooding to happen. Before we remember that we ought to have done certain things which we neglected to do. All these waters are very useful for irrigation, for fishing, and for transportation. Why we cannot channel it, why we cannot make use of this abundant water is uh, a tragedy of monumental proportion mm. on the part of the country. Okay, let's move to the nation newspaper and take a few headlines from there. Um, no return to petrol subsidy, says NNPCL. Uh, stakeholders have said that the, N the fuel subsidy is still uh, there, the federal government is still paying, and so many people are wondering if there is no fuel subsidy, how it is that while on the one hand there is the complaint that landing cost for this uh, fuel is more than the petrol pump price and the, the, the price is still what it is right now and federal government is still saying that it's insisting that there is no uh, fuel subsidy. So I'd like your comment on that because NNPCL uh, Mele Kiari has come out to say that there is no fuel subsidy whatsoever. What are your comments? I read that in the papers. I read uh, what Mr. Kiari uh, said in the papers. And I've also read what some analysts uh, like Ruben Abati and others have said with regards to the fact that the government has also... I think Pengasan also made some insinuations in that respect that the federal government has again gone back to fuel uh, subsidy and all that. The that truth of the matter is so that we are not growing mm. a local mm. society. We are not running an open uh, government at all in this country. Most times, uh, things like this will begin to happen. Uh, rather than the government being honest with its people, it will be pretending over it because they don't want to be seen to have taken economic steps which were never well thought out, which is leading to the ruination of the people and all that. There is no shame in correcting your mistakes or reverting back to the status quo if the path you are taking 
is not working well for you. Kenya removed oil subsidy, and when they knew that it was going to lead to a free uprising and massive social dislocation, they quickly reverted back to status quo. There is nothing wrong. If it is not working in Nigeria for the government to go back to the regime of uh, oil subsidy, because as it were today, with the dwindling fortune of the Naira, the prices of petroleum products in the pump in the stations and all that will continue to rise as long as Naira continues to get its value. I mean, as long as the value of the Naira continues to dwindle, because we don't produce it here, and the petroleum products is bought and in the international market at a foreign exchange or currency uh, rate. So we are in serious, serious quandary, very, very serious quandary. And let's hope that the government will be able to manage uh, the petroleum sector and the crisis, the attendant crisis that um, will go with it. Because if that is not done, you are not likely, you are, we are most likely to see a kind of uh, a backlash in terms of uh, uprising. We pray we don't see it. Again, there is likely to be massive, massive stealing in the public sector. In the civil servants who have a car, and who are used to comfort, who have generators in their home, also in the private sector, people who have cars, who have a generators in their home, and then NEPA or PSN has also not been doing well in the recent weeks. We begin to find ways and means in terms of stealing, or is it embezzlement, or was the, the allies would want to call it, or is it money laundering, to be able to sustain the lifestyle that they are used into. So it's, it's a very, very serious thing. I have always said it. There is no country in the world that doesn't maintain one regime of subsidies or the other. In some countries of the world, and I'm, I am of the opinion that we already should be having that here, in which there will be food banks, so that those people you see in the motor park sleeping under the bridges and all that, who have no job and means of livelihood, who go to some of these food banks, get uh, one square meal, uh, one good clean water in a day, so that at least that will keep them uh, going. We are removing subsidy, inflation is rising, there's massive insecurity all over the place. And all this insecurity that you see has a corollary derivation or effect on the inflation on uh, rising cost of living because they say the devil will always find a work for a hand to hands to do some will rather want to engage in nefarious activities than to die under the bridge of a kwasoko and onga and uh, to worsen the situation we now having a number of uh, ministers very, very massive uh, uh, bureaucracy is being built up by the present government. We have never had this kind of number of ministers uh, in the past. And for every minister, there will be advisors, there will be personal assistants, there will be security guards, there will be police or delays. When you multiply the implications of all that, the cost of maintaining all these people, maintaining the National Assembly, the local government chairman, the directors in the ministries and parasatas and all that, the picture becomes clearer. Um, there is uh, just at the bottom of that front page of the Nation newspaper yeah. an interesting headline. Uh, Southeast Senate caucus renews push for additional ministerial slots. We're already talking about 48 ministers uh, that are being appointed now, and the Southeast Caucus is still asking for more. Probably other geopolitical zones could also come out and say they want more of ministerial slots. Your comments, please. We take the of the fathers of the Nigerian nation. We look at the very serious issues from very tender perspective on the perspective of uh, tribe, on the perspective of uh, religion. Don't forget that some religious bodies have also come out that they don't have a, the same complement of ministers 
at the federal level and also the same compliments of a minister at uh, the state level, like some other uh, religions do have. And you ask yourself, of what benefit uh, will it be to these people when people are appointed ministers based on religion, based on tribes? In my humble opinion, it's not going to add any value to any tribe or to any religion. Because most times, when these people get into government, what they first do is take care of themselves, take care of their nuclear families, take care of their extended families, and thereafter begin to take care of a, of a village or town before they now will remember maybe they came from one tribe or the other. And uh, by the time they take care of their immediate family and their own immediate needs and all that, the four years as minister would have uh, gone by, they would have spent it. Look at uh, the example of Dr. Kula Jonathan. He is the president of the vice president. In what way has that improved a lot of the people of Ayesa? Look at Obasanjo. He's been two time head of state. In what way have the Yoruba people profited from um, his uh, presidency that other tribes never benefited? And look at uh, Musa Yaradua and all the rest of them. And ditto for some of these other people as the ministers and all that. They hardly had value to their communities. If they build the road in their communities and what have you, it's mostly not that would lead to their own personal or private houses and all sorts of places they worship, or road that will link their own houses to their family houses in some remote parts of uh, um, uh, the town or village or city. Those infrastructures are not provided to be able to take care of or give some comfort or succor to the communities in which some of these people uh, live in. Do your own investigation. Most times when roads are constructed in certain places, when boreholes are, are built and what have you, when schools are renovated and all that, they do these things merely for personal or political aggrandizement. They are usually both catching a gimmick or a kind of um, a signature project. Let I be remembered that I was the one that constructed this overhead bridge or this pedestrian bridge, or this uh, uh, boulevard that passes uh, through DRA, leading to the golf club, leading to the polo club, and what have you. So this is the issue. Infrastructures are never provided based on the need of the community. Schools are never provided or innovated based on the need of the community, but usually to cut votes and to satisfy placing gas. Okay, I'll just ask you two questions. You take one of okay. them if it is possible because we're running out of time. One is, from okay. the, one is from The Guardian. If you want to respond to that one, go ahead. The other one is from Nature News. The one from Guardian is that federal government's bid for concrete roads to spike capital expenditure amid 10 trillion naira old contractors. And the one from Nature News is Nigeria grapples with health and environmental impacts of firewood cooking. 150 million Nigerians risk lung cancer. That's according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Take your pick. That's a final question. Well, uh, the concrete road and all that might be wishful thinking. I don't know where we care and the president will find the money to begin to build a concrete road. Even uh, so, Umahi, I Umahi. do agree with Mr. Wiki. Umahi. The building of concrete road is the most uh, With regard to firewood uh, and all that, with the price of uh, gas now, it will be difficult for the average Nigerian home to be able to afford gas for their cooking. Without those gas and all that, what we might be seeing again is a massive, massive deforestation and very, very serious uh, uh, ecological uh, impact which will directly impact on uh, the climate change that you and I have been talking about since morning. Okay, well, uh, that is how we will draw the curtain on uh, uh, of the press this morning. Mr. Tunde Kolawole, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thanks for having me.
Okay. We've been talking with Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos. We've been reviewing the uh, headlines of our national, some of our national dailies. We treated The Punch, uh, The Nation, The Guardian, and then Nature News this morning. We'll take a break, and when we return, we enter uh, the discussion on our first topic. Stay with us.